Building a project that incorporates a lot of servo motors can be difficult, mainly because when you go to calibrate the position of all of those servo arms, you have to do it in the code, which means changing a variable here and there, re-uploading the code, and then seeing if the servo is doing what you expect it to do. We've attempted to solve that problem by creating the servo trigger board. And what this board does is it offloads all of that functionality from your central controller to this ATtiny that's on board. Now, it'll only allow you to do pretty simple servo action, but it does it with a high or a low signal. I mean, you can just connect a push button switch across these two pins here and control a servo. Now, what it does is it sets up the servo in one position, which it calls position A, which you can adjust just by using a screwdriver and adjusting this pot. And then when you press the button, it moves to position B and holds there as long as you're holding the button. Position B also, you can change just by moving this potentiometer. And the time it takes to get in between those two points is also adjustable using another potentiometer on board labeled T for time or transit time. When you let go of the button, it moves back from position B to position A. So uh, you'll be able to see in this demonstration, it's pretty straightforward. You press the button, it goes here, let go of the button, it goes back without having to write any code at all. And all of that is completely adjustable just using a pocket screwdriver. You don't have to program anything. There's also a one-shot mode. So if you actually take the solder off of this jumper, it goes into a mode where you press the button and it goes all the way to B and back to A, no matter how long you hold the button down. Um, which is useful for a lot of projects where you don't want that bi-stable operation. In theory, you can reprogram this. We've broken out the ISP connector, so if you have a programmer for the ATtiny ICs and the toolchain to program them, you can download the firmware from the product page for this product, alter it slightly, and there are a whole lot of different modes that you could put on these if you were doing a big installation and you need a very specific type of servo behavior. As they are, though, they're really handy for servo projects that, frankly, didn't really require an Arduino in the first place, but I've used Arduinos in them in the past because that was, well, the easiest thing up till now. What I've done here is I've connected the servo trigger to our sound detector board. The sound detector, as you'll remember, is a simple board that just takes a microphone input and then outputs a gate signal whenever it has um, enough volume, something above a certain threshold. So what it's doing now is it's just detecting a certain volume, and you can tell because the servo is moving roughly at the time that I'm speaking and uh, I'm using the gate output from that as the input signal for the servo controller. Ooh, I'm ready for my close-up, Greg. I'm a big, dumb unicorn. Ha, 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 magic. So I didn't have to write any code here. All I did was adjust a few potentiometers, and I had to add a resistor to the sound detector board to adjust the gain, but that wasn't too big of a deal. I'm full of magic and a servo that takes up most of my head. In the end, uh, it's a little bit creepy, but this is actually an application that you might find uh, in the real world if you're interested in doing animatronics. This is a pretty straightforward way to puppet something with your voice. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? For something with an even smaller components count, I put together this rubber band gun. And what I've done here is I've just connected a light-sensitive resistor across the input and ground pins of the servo trigger board. So I'm using this photocell as the switch that uh, controls the servo. I've also powered this with a 9-volt battery by simply taking a 5-volt regulator and jamming it down into the ground and VCC pins here, which leaves the input pin open. Um, to connect to this 9-volt battery clip. So this is a pretty straightforward way to power this thing on batteries without having to get um, a lithium polymer battery and a charger and a step up and all that nonsense involved. I also have one of our micro-sized servos and all of this is just taped together and then zip-tied to a pencil. What I've done is I've taken this uh, servo horn and uh, put it on in such a way so that it's just kind of on the edge of letting go of this rubber band when it's in uh, full B position. So you can stretch a rubber band across it like this and then put it in A position that pulls back on the rubber band and then you set this in a dark place and, like a cupboard or a closet and when they open the door the light rushes in, hits the LDR and then this whole thing goes like this and uh, flicks them in the face with a rubber band. Ah!
I am an abomination. Kill me. Ah, what have I become?